lift a song of praise. of God this morning? I think we do. Amen. Hey, well, welcome. We're so glad that you were here. My guitar doesn't work, so that's fun. But that won't stop us. Amen? <laughs> well, it's awesome to have you with us here. Um, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to actually dive into a new song this morning. And the basis of this song is so cool, and the idea is that no matter what is happening in our lives, we're still going to lift up our praise to our God because He's still worthy. And because when praise goes up, what happens? Power comes down, right? Blessings come down. So this song, it says, I'm going to raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Yeah, you know what it is, right? <laughs> I'm going to raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to dive right in. God, the words that we're about to sing, Jesus, they're true, Lord. God, when we praise you and when you're on our side, Jesus, things happen for us, Lord. And even if they don't, God, you're still worthy and you're still good. And we acknowledge that this morning. We're so excited to sing this song to you. We worship you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Let's dive in. Thank you. 
thank you, Jesus, God. No matter what's going on, you're good, Lord Jesus. And we praise you. Acknowledge that right now. We say your spirit would fall upon this place as we continue to worship you, Jesus. Thankful for moments like these, Lord.
the Son, Jesus our Savior, lift your voice. beautiful than the church standing together united as the body of Christ singing what we believe and that is that Jesus Christ is Lord over everything over everyone one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess but we're not waiting until then Jesus we believe you God we believe in who you are and we ask that you would hear in this place 
Continue to move, Lord. We worship you. We praise you. We pray this in your name. Everybody said it. Amen. Amen. Take your seats. Well, good morning. It's still morning, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Beautiful day. It's good to see everybody here in the house of the Lord together. Another beautiful time with Jesus and each other. some things that are bittersweet aren't there like a lemon and an orange or a lemon and a strawberry they're bittersweet uh, such the case this morning uh, Ronnie who gave us a three year commitment here in our church he came on board for three years that three years is almost up not quite but uh, opportunity has come up for him and it's his intention to 
move on after the three years. I just want you to know that. We spoke, and he did say that, yeah, uh, after the three-year contract, uh, we're, uh, we're going to move on and uh, move to Phoenix. I think that's what he said. They were moving to uh, the big city and uh, uh, move on with his career. And that's wonderful because we want the best for this young man and his wife. So with that, this will be his last service. Yeah, oh no, yeah. Well, you wouldn't say that if I told you it was my last service. You guys would applaud, get up, cheer, pass around the cigars. Yeah, 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 right. God has something in store. I knew it was, I knew it was for three years, saints, when we, when we brought him on. That was the agreement. He's a young man full of talent and uh, abilities. He's writing his own music and posting it and people are responding to it. He's been to Nashville. So, I mean, good things are happening for him and we want to see good things happen. So let him, let him say what he wants to say and then we'll pray for him, okay? Awesome, thank you. Uh, I'm so sorry about this news and um, again, my, my heart is never to leave or abandon anybody but when God calls you you go um, and there's no doubt in my mind that he's calling me away and so um, I just wanted to, to say that from the bottom of my heart um, and in all reality not not just saying this I've been to a lot of places I've been to a lot of churches I've talked to a lot of people and never has there ever been a congregation like this um, that embraces the spirit of, of true worship um, and when I was hired, you know, a worship leader's job is to create a culture of worship, for lack of a better word, and to facilitate that and steward over it. And it's been the easiest job that anyone could have because you guys already got it. So um, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Let's pray for this young man and his wife who's serving us in the, in the back there with the little babies. Father, we pray for this young man. We pray for Ronnie and Katie. Uh, new, still newlyweds. We pray for their endeavors. We pray for what's next. It's great. It's mighty. It's, it's powerful. And we're happy for him. And we know you're pleased with him. So we ask your blessing. Use him. Continue moving in his life in a mighty, mighty way. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we've had this, uh, so when one, uh, one moves on, then another one comes in. So we're already in, in that mode. So uh, uh, we're expecting God to move in the mighty way. Amen. Okay. We have been talking about fixing it. Fix it is what uh, the title is, renovating your life. Uh, teens, off you go. I'm sorry. There you go. Off you go, young people. Got quite a few of them today. Great. Way to go. Way to go, young people. Come in the church. So uh, there are things that always need to be fixed around the house, right, guys? And there's things always that need to be fixed in our lives. One way we fix things is by prayer. Prayer, we have learned will build and strengthen your faith, which fixes things. Also, another way to fix it is by the Word of God. The Word of God will fix things in your life. And to, to add on to that, we've been talking last week, and we'll finish this week, talking about speaking the Word of God. If you want to fix it, speak it in Jesus' name. Speak to it in Jesus' name. Speak the word of God. We saw last week in Isaiah 55, 11, 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And so, it shall... Go ahead. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Yeah. So it will do. God's word will do what he sent it to do, will accomplish that which I please, 
his good and perfect will, and it will prosper whatever, it's, whatever it touches. It will prosper. God has sent his word to heal us. Healing. God sent when you speak that, healing comes. God sent his word to deliver. God, God sent his word to save us. So what's the result of God sending his word to save us? Salvation. Salvation comes in Jesus' name. Now remember, God Almighty spoke all things into creation. He didn't think it into creation. He did what? He spoke it into creation. Psalm 33, 6, please. Psalm 33, 6. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So by the word of God, everything was made. All things were created. Verse 9, please. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood now fast. that's powerful, to speak, and it's done. To command, and it stands fast. Wouldn't you like your children to... Yeah, right, right. Let alone your husband. All right. Uh, what? What? Thus, God created all things by his spoken word. So thusly, all things respond to his spoken word. God holds all things together. Upholds all things we learned last week by the power of his word. God Almighty commanded the ravens to feed Elijah meat and bread, and the birds obey. His creation obeyed. It says, take Elijah a steak and some French bread every day. And the ravens, the birds, obeyed and brought him meat and bread every day. Jesus commanded a storm. Peace be still. And the storm became calm immediately. See, all things respond that God has created, and he's created all things to his spoken word that created them. The Bible likens the word of God to a sword. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. Isaiah 49 says he's fashioned our mouth. Let's read that. Isaiah 49, 2, God Almighty, go ahead. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. So the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, is the spoken word. That's like a sword in your mouth when you speak the word of God. It's powerful and it's effective. Proverbs 12, 18, New King James. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Don't you love those people that speak those negative words, hurtful words, and they feel like daggers going into you? But we can speak positive words, good words, God's word. Yes. And it's like the tongue of the wise and promotes what? God's spoken word will promote health, promote health, well-being, goodness. Hallelujah. Joshua 1.8, we're still just talking about last week. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and yes. then thou shalt have good success. So here is a warning to the people of God. It says, don't let the book of the law, don't let the word of God depart from your mouth. When people are struggling with things, when Christians are struggling with things, whether it be finances, health, home life, just Issues, issues of life. They have let the word of God depart from their mouth. Because if they continue speaking the word, those things will flip in a heartbeat. They have to respond to the spoken word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't, do not let, turn to somebody and say, don't let the word of God depart from your mouth. Can you remember all that? Can I hear somebody say, shut up? <laughs> you better not. 
Therapy time. Time for therapy, Teresa. Are you ready? Okay. Faith therapy. We go into therapy. Uh, we've done it for about three, four weeks now to do what? For fun? No. To make something stronger. And what are we making stronger? Our faith. And that will fix things in our life. So let's go into a little bit of drills and, and therapy. I have a new four scripture uh, faith drill for us to speak out loud together. These are four new ones. I'll give you the address. And they're available on the counter on your way out. These are powerful and effective. Since I can't see that back there, I'll look over here. All right. Romans 8.28. That's a good one to keep saying, that all things work together for the good. All your messes, all your problems, God will work together for your good and His glory. Isaiah 41, 13, please. So what do you think about that one? How about waking up? And being worried already, as soon as your feet hit the ground and you see that scripture and you begin to get into therapy about it. Huh? Faith therapy. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, fear not. Yes. I will help you. Wow. That'll perk you up real quick. Better than two cups of coffee. Proverbs 3.24. Now, how many times have I alluded to the fact about having sweet sleep? And many people said, you're just saying that. That's not in the scripture. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, Proverbs 3, 24. Wouldn't you like to say that, have a little therapy drill before you go to bed, and just shout that out, speak that out, the word of God out loud. I'm lying down, Lord. I will not be afraid. You, I will lie down with sweet sleep. Then you suck your thumb and sleep all through the night beautifully in Jesus' name. Do we have one more? Yes, we do. Jeremiah 17, 14. Wonderful, wonderful. How about the ten finger faith drill? Can you put that one up, please? Philippians 4, 13. That's ten words. You have ten fingers. We start out with a fist. And each word you say out loud to increase your faith. Put up a finger. You ready? Go. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in Jesus' name. It's true. It's true. It's absolutely true. Amen and amen. amen. One last part of our faith therapy is prayer. It always increases. We build up our most holy faith by prayer. It's the hedge of protection prayer that I think we should be praying every single morning before you leave your house. About It covers your children. It covers you. It covers your car, your possessions. It's the real deal right here. You ready? Lift your hands out loud. Oh Lord, build a hedge about me and my house and about all that I have on every side. Bless the work of my hands and increase my substance in the land. Cause not the wicked to stretch forth their hands to touch me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, therapy's over. That, not, that didn't hurt, did it? But you feel stronger now, don't you? Absolutely. Colossians 3.16 Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let it be in abundance in you. Why? Because from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. If the Word of God is in you, you will be speaking it. And that's the power. 
See, the Word of God is like, speaking the Word of God is like speaking these uh, containers. And when you speak it, it pops open the container and God's power is released. How is God's power released? By speaking the Word of God. We see that in the life of Jesus. We see that in the life of the saints in the book of Acts. And you can see it in your life. And I know it's difficult. And you'll start out a little shaky. You want us to speak the word out loud. When we read our Bible, you want us to read it out loud. Yeah, you want us to keep our Bible open at home. Yes! And it's going to seem a little strange at first. But once you get going into it, that's all you'll want to do every time there's a problem. Speak a promise to it. Speak a promise to it. In Jesus' name. Look at Luke 10, 16. Luke 10, 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Yeah. Look at the first few words. The person that hears you speak his word, hears you speak the word of God, is hearing Jesus. Isn't that what it says? He that heareth you, heareth me. So when you speak the word of God, literally, people and devils are hearing Jesus speak. And boy, do they respond in Jesus' name. When a believer of God and his word... You can't separate the two. People try to. I believe in God, but I don't believe in His Word, the Bible. You can't separate the two. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. God is His Word. It's, it's, it's both or none. When as believers we speak God's Word, give voice to His Word, that's what you're doing. You're giving voice to this. Mighty, powerful things will happen. Indeed, it will do what God sent it to do, and it will bring salvation to those that give voice to the Scripture. Call upon the name of the Lord, and ye shall be saved. Look at Romans 10, 8 through 10, please. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So true, genuine salvation happens in two parts. With the heart and with the mouth. It's the, with the heart you believe, it's the, with the mouth you confess, you speak, Jesus is Lord. Both are required for true salvation. You can't think yourself saved. You speak it in Jesus' name. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Oh, that's so powerful. Look at this. Uh, speaking the word of God, giving voice to the word of God, also defeats the enemy at every turn and destroys his plans. And believe me, God has a plan for your life, but so does the enemy. And you defeat those plans that the devil has, kill, steal, and destroy. By what? Speaking the word of God, I'll show you. Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. So the blood of Jesus overcame him. How do we appropriate that victory by the word of our testimony. So the power of the blood is released when you speak God's word. And it defeats the enemy at every turn. Every single time. That's why I tell people, if you're having problems in your home and issues in your family, walk around speaking the word of God out loud. Do something different. Instead of putting the, the calm music station up louder, or talking to Elizabeth. What's that little round lady's name in the round cylinder? What's her name? Yeah, I don't like her. Come out in Jesus' name. Walk around speaking the word of God out loud. It will have effect. I know that sounds strange to a lot of you. You're not used to it. 
Jesus did it all the time. Yes. Uh, look at this scripture. Uh, Luke 10, 17 through 20. 17 through 20. Go and ahead. the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Yeah, before we go on, it says that Jesus ordained 70 to go out preaching the gospel. They, he knew they would run into trouble. Every time you preach the gospel, every preacher in the pulpit is going to have conflict come against him. Just, just be careful what you want to do for a vocation. You better be called by God. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us when we speak your name. See, they respond to the name of Jesus. And the enemy will respond to the name of Jesus when you speak it, if it's coming from a heart that loves him, yeah. that has faith. So you just speak in Jesus' name. I do it all the time. Something, phone call, will say, in Jesus' name. That's not going to happen. In Jesus' name, you will be healed. I'm speaking the word in the name of Jesus. doesn't get any better than that. Hallelujah. Uh, and then go on, 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Yeah, yeah, when Satan was thrown out of uh, heaven before the creation, Jesus was there because he's the I am. Go ahead, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means so what hurt power you. power might that be? The power of the spoken word. When you put God's word in your heart and speak it out of your mouth, I'm telling you, there's power and authority right there. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah is right. And, and, and 20? I like this one. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So I just threw that in because I want you to see it. Uh, they came back rejoicing because they had a successful ministry uh, time. And they were so excited that demons were coming out. And people were getting healed and blind eyes open. Well, I would be too. Jesus said, don't get excited about that. That's the norm around here. Get excited that your names are written in heaven. That's exciting. Are you excited about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a great example of Jesus in action. Matthew 4, 10, and 11. Actually, it's 1 through 11. Let's do 1 through 11. Are you up to reading that many scriptures? Yes. Go ahead. Let's read. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered the unto him. The same thing is going to happen for you. How did Jesus combat those three temptations? How did he battle uh, the enemy? By saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. He was speaking the word, scripture. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but every word that comes from, and he went on and on and on. Then the devil tried to use it. The devil said, it is written. And he skewed the scripture to try to fool Jesus. It was a half truth. Be careful about half truths. You might get the wrong half. All right. 
How did Jesus handle it? It is written. He's our example. He spoke the word of God. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus spoke and devils came out with just a word. Just a word, the Bible says. Jesus spoke and Lazarus came forth from the grave. Jesus spoke and loaves and fishes were multiplied. Jesus spoke and the cripple walked. The blind could see. The lame lipped, uh, leaped. The storm was ceased. It was when Jesus gave voice to the word of God, mighty things happened. See, when you're up against something that you know is demonic, you can't think the devil away. He can't hear you. I mean, he doesn't know your thoughts. He responds to the spoken word of God. He obeys it. He fears it. He will flee in Jesus. So you got to speak it out loud. And don't be a wimp about it. Speak the word of God. When you read the Bible, read it out loud. Those scriptures you have in your heart, speak them out loud. When you're running into difficulties and circumstances, I'm telling you, it'll make all the difference in the world. Yes. Now can you see why the Bible says Satan, when the seed is sown, Satan comes like a bird to steal the seed. Why? Because he doesn't want you to get that seed, believe it, the word of God, and then speak it. That's his demise. So he wants to steal it out of your mouth. Don't let him. Matthew 8, 8 and 9. And then verse 13. Matthew 8, 8 and 9. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Isn't that great? Speak the word only. Just say a word. Just speak the word only. And that's something we need to pick up on. Yes. Got trouble in your house? Speak the word only. Yes. Doctor said doesn't look good? Speak the word only. Caught up in some type of addiction? Speak the word only. Yes, Is that what it says here? Look at verse 9. Look at the, the centurion's reasoning. Go ahead. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. So he's using an example. He said, look, I'm a man under authority, and I have soldiers. I tell them to go, and they go. I tell them to come, and they come. I tell them to jump, and they say, hi, hi. He understands how it works with the spoken command. And he's using that to reason in his mind and have faith that Jesus, just say the word. Just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. And guess what? The servant was healed. Look at verse 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Amen. Just as you believe, just as you spoke and asked, it's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 119.28. We see this same thing here in the, in the Old Testament. New King James. Go ahead. That's My fine. soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. So the psalmist would often cry out when he was in need or hurt or in pain. He would cry out, according to your word, heal me. According to your word, help me. Here it says, my soul melts from heaviness. I'm depressed. I'm overwhelmed. Strengthen me according to your word. And it'll happen. Look at Psalm 119, 107. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Say, according to thy word. Is that hard? It's not hard. According to his word, he will do it according to his word. Yes. Remember, he sent his word to accomplish his purpose. Look at Mark 11, 22 and 23, please. We're going to talk a little bit about moving mountains. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So, whatever he saith, whatever he speaks to the mountain, he'll, and if he believes in his heart, it'll move. Is that what it says? It says, speak to the mountain. Right? 
Listen to me now. It doesn't say talk about the mountain. It says speak to the mountain. Yes. It doesn't say talk about your sickness to everybody. It says speak to your sickness. It doesn't say uh, uh, talk about your addiction. It says speak to it. There's a difference. Speaking about something, you say, oh, we just don't have any money. And we don't have anything for food. Well, speaking to that mountain of debt or problem or not having the finances is, Lord, you said you promised you would meet all of our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. According to your word, bring provision. Yes. Don't talk about it. Speak to it. Yes. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to help you do that, I have a little present for you. I bought 200 of these. There's plenty left. Boy, they sure loved them at the first service. Uh, they're called the Bible Promise Book. And there's 1,000 scriptures in here. 1,000. Ooh, it's hot. And uh, uh, it's all God's Word. But the neat thing about it, it has a table of contents. Like up there. You can't see it. But it and it lists all the problems and everything you might come across uh, in a general way. Anger, charity children's duties oh you need to read that one uh, fear <laughs> fear uh, obedient wife no 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 it's not in here it's not. I'm just kidding uh, guilt uh, Sunday football for husbands only no I didn't say it it didn't say it there's no scripture for that uh, help in trouble Holy Spirit honesty humility jealousy Laziness, oh boy. And, and it just goes on and on. Fear, uh, sickness, uh, despair, depression. And then there's a page number opposite it. That's a table of contents. You go to that numbered page, let's say for hope, right? Alex, for hope. And they, there's the page for hope that you found in the table of contents. And guess what it has? It has a full page of scriptures concerning that problem you're having to fix it to fix it and to speak them out loud in Jesus mighty name hallelujah I have these for you pick one up on your way out and it will bless you ladies put it in your purse and uh, uh, guys you put it in your pocket your car at home wherever and when you're struggling with something instead of flipping through the Bible where is that verse I can't find that verse just go to the table of contents and there's a list of verses there for you. Fear is a big one and it's all over the place. There, that'll help you. So let me close with this. And yeah. <laughs> uh, you want me to leave too, don't you? Acts 4. Actually, I'm not done yet. I said in closing. It might take 30 minutes. Acts 4.29. Acts 4.29 through 31. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may, they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Yes, in Jesus' name. Look at verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. You know, the enemy loves to threaten and he does it every day to us. You're not going to have enough gas money. Nobody really cares about you anymore. Your family's breaking apart. All these threats, you're never going to make it. All these threats, they were coming against the people of God here. And what was their remedy to the threats of the enemy? Let us speak thy word with boldness. There's your remedy. That's how you fight threats and put them out and destroy them coming against you. 30 goes on to say <clears throat> stretch forth your hand to heal signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus 
31 says they prayed and they're all filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke the word of God with boldness. That's how signs and wonders come. That's how heaven opens. That's how angels begin to jump. They respond to the vo- give, when we give voice to the word of God. It's powerful. It's effective. I'm trying to give you the tools, the papers, the scriptures to do it at home all the time. It will change your life. It will fix it in Jesus' name. Isaiah 54, 17, NLT, please. Last verse. But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. There's no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, he will condemn. Thus, this is the heritage of the righteous in Christ. It's beautiful. See, he's our protector. He watches over us. He helps us. And when you speak the word of God, you're unleashing the power of God. Stand on your feet. Don't forget to grab a book and a couple of uh, the papers uh, with the verses on them. When you leave, I think it'll help you. Especially the promise book. They're really nice. A great help in the time of trouble. The Lord. If you need prayer, how many need prayer here this morning? I see hands. I see several hands go up. Things are going on. You got threats coming against you <laughs> by the enemy. He's threatening you with some type of disease, some type of pain, some type of legal action, some type of poverty. He just loves to accuse the brethren. You know, the Bible says that. But he has no say in it. All you can do is threat. A threat doesn't hurt you. It's meant to scare you. So, Lord, those that raise their hands need prayer desperately. We want to pray with. Boldly declare the scripture and speak the word of God over them. So I ask you to get out of your chair and come forward. Pastors and leaders and and chaplains. Chaplains, come on, please. We'll pray with you as you come forth. A lot of hands go up. Come on, this is it. This is your time to come into agreement, to have the word of God prayed over you in a mighty, mighty way. Just come forward. We're going to pray. We're going to pray in Jesus' name. Come on. It's okay. It's okay to have a problem. Jesus said you're going to have them. We're not in denial. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world, Jesus said. Come on forward. Come on forward in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people in this place. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, bless each and every one of them mightily. And may we all speak the word of God boldly, transforming our lives, fixing our lives, renovating our lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace.